The Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not counting our sins against us. He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. All right, we're looking at Hebrews 9, 24, 26. And the reason is that our passage from verse 23 through 28 involves three Greek sentences and they're they're loaded with information so we've divided it I've divided it into the three lessons we did 23 last week um, talking about I believe it was the, the, the necessity of shadow Christology why did we even have it we had prophecy why did we need shadow Christology and we talked about that <clears throat> today we're going to look at 24 and 25 it says, for Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one, but into the heavens itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf for us. Nor was it that he should offer himself often as the high priest, enter the holy place year by year with blood not of his own, Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once at the consummation of the ages, plural, he has been manifested to put away sin by the, by the sacrifice of himself. What I'm looking at today is the, the uh, consummation of the ages. I mean, what does that mean? And uh, that kind of stands out when you read it, right? You kind of look at that. The other the rest of it kind of makes, then you go like, well, what is that? And so that becomes my job to tell you what that means, okay? So we're gonna, that's going to be our study today. We're going to look at four, four aspects of the consummation of the ages taken from Hebrews now, remember the context of what, what it is. It is shadow Christology and the high priest going in once a year, every year after year, every year, every year, since the Passover out of Exodus uh, to deal with the consummation of the ages. So they did this every year until the consummation of the ages came. Now, once the consummation of the ages come, we don't ever have to do that ever again. Did you, did you notice that? See, he talks in verse 25, year by year, verse 26, otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often. Now, who is the he? Christ. Jesus Christ. So the consummation of the ages deals with, in broad terms, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world. But he's got to accomplish his mission, which is to go to the cross, right? Right. Uh, and so that's what he talks about. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. That goes back to Adam's sin and why he needed to come into the world, right? Mm -hmm. Foundation of the world is Adam's sin, and now he has to come into the world to rectify that. But now once, not often, but once, at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to the world. He has made his grand entrance into the world. He has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So that's, that in the nutshell is what the consummation of the ages is. But you see, that's plural. And it's the plural of ages that goes all the way back to what? Foundation of the world or Adam's sin. Now, what ages are is what we call dispensations theologically, but this is plural. And so the consummation of the ages is the coming of Christ is going to bring all of the dispensations into one focus, and that's into the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's quite a piece of history right there, okay? Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll get into this study. You know, classroom etiquette, 
If you're a believer, that by that I mean you believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised on the third day, which this passage talks about. At the consummation of the ages, he sacrificed himself for our sins. If you believe that, that he was buried and raised from the dead on the third day, that's called the gospel. It is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God to save you when you believe. Romans 1.16. And now that you're saved, indwelt by the Holy Spirit because you live in the dispensation of the church and the new covenant. It's your responsibility to make sure that you're a spiritual person reading a spiritual book for spiritual living. You can't study the Bible, nor can you apply it to your life in carnality. Evidence of carnality in your life is personal sin. It could be mental attitude sins. It could be sins of the tongue. It could be overt sin. What, what is your responsibility as a priest in this dispensation? According to 1 Peter 2, you're a priest. Is to confess your sin before the Father in the name of Christ. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That allows the Holy Spirit to teach you truth. Truth is what sets you free from the cosmic system of lies. And that's very important in your life. So, our Father, we come to you tonight. We pray the Holy Spirit would be able to minister the truth of the Word of God to our souls because we are spiritual. We are spiritual people studying a spiritual book for spiritual living. I pray the things we learned tonight would add to that venue of the spiritual life of a believer. Give us more confidence about our life in the world and in the angelic conflict. Give us confidence in our prayer life. Give us confidence in our daily life as we walk this walk out by faith. For we've made our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Point number one. The writer assumes, when he lays this information out, the writer assumes that the readers to whom he's writing were familiar with certain doctrinal terms. For example, He's confident, for some reason, that they understand what the consummation of the ages mean. That they're confident that this whole thing began from the foundation of the world. Somebody has taught them that there's a foundation of the world from which Christ has got to come into the world and suffer for the sins of others. So he's assuming that these people know a great deal to whom he's writing, right? Now, when I study a passage like this, I get a lot of pushback, both from people who attend and those who listen to us by the Internet, that I teach a whole, you teach way too much. I think they mean by time, because all I'm doing is teaching the Bible. When people say that to me, then I know here's how they read the Bible if they read it at all. They skip around in it. They pick and choose. And when they don't understand something in the Bible, they just skip it, kind of like when they don't know a vocabulary word. Instead of going to the dictionary, they skip it over. All right? So it's very important. You see, we, all we do is study the Bible. We just go book by book, verse by verse. <clears throat> probably with, probably, and, and they say, well, you're kind of heavy. <clears throat> I don't know what heavy is. I mean, that's not heavy. Study, studying the Bible in the English. I don't know how that's heavy, but anyhow. <clears throat> but when, when you study it book by book and chapter by chapter, verse by verse, you can't skip stuff. <clears throat> Not in this church, anyhow. <laughs> can't skip nothing. Now, the curious minds want to know. They come to be fed. It's my responsibility to do it. But what, I just find it interesting. I know as a pastor, when you're familiar with people, you can, lay, you can lay doctrinal terms out there and just, you know, your people know it or they should know it. And that, that makes a lot of difference in being able to go and explain things rather than go back to, you know, 101 foundational ideas. Um, but every once in a while you need that because sometimes you don't realize there's people that don't have all those foundational ideas. And so you have to stop and explain some things. So doing that, like this passage here, it requires you to talk a little bit about stuff that's within the structure. 
what he's talking about when he says the foundation of the world to the consummation of the ages, what he's talking about here, <clears throat> over here in the foundation of the world, you're talking about where Adam is. That's the first Adam. And that's where our Bible begins, the book of Genesis. That's where it begins in the book of Genesis. You leaps, it leaps over here to the consummation of the ages, which is the coming of Christ in the world, to solve, this is the last Adam out of, this is the last Adam out of 1 Corinthians 15, 45. The first Adam is over here and the last Adam is here. And he came to resolve this problem. This is Adam's original sin. He comes and deals with that right here. He deals with that and deals with all the sin connected to it, imputed, inherent individual. And, and what the writer calls this, he calls this the foundation of the world. And he calls this the consummation of the ages. Okay? And, and that, the Greek word for that is really important. Uh, we'll talk about it tonight. The Greek word for that is really important. Now, when you read this passage, I, I always remind you, look for key words or look for things that are repetitive. And here's, here's something that's really important. Watch the word now, once, or, or often to be the next word. Watch for the word now, often. Watch for the word once, followed with the word after. Are you with me? Let me go back to the passage. Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one, but into the heavens itself now, to appear in the presence of God for all of us. You know what that is? What do we call that in theology? Back to the presence of the God for, on our behalf. You know what we call that? We call that the ascension and session. He came to earth. He died on a cross. He was buried. He was raised from the dead. He spent 40 days in post-resurrection appearances. And then Acts 1, he goes back to the Father. And he's seated at the right hand of God the Father today with all authority. We call that ascension. We call it death, burial, resurrection. Then we call it ascension session. He's in session today. He sits on the throne. Okay? That's very important. Uh, and, and there's the now. Now, look. I said watch for now. Where's the now? Is it on earth or in heaven? It's in heaven. Our now is in heaven. Huh. And, and listen, and you know what he's doing there for us on earth? He's there on our behalf, right? Yeah, he's, he's there for, on our behalf. Like what John talks about in 1 John 2. He's there on our behalf. The word for means on our behalf. He's there on our behalf. Now, what's he doing up there? Well, he's an advocate for us in prayer. He does all kinds. Of, he's the head of the church. You part of the church? I, I don't mean a physical body. I mean a spiritual body. Of course you are. You are if you believe the gospel, right? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's all these things to us. Uh, see, but the first now is where? Well, look at, look. Now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. See that? And listen. Therefore, like in Hebrews 4th chapter, verse 16, now, because of that, you can come boldly to the throne of grace and make your request. You can come boldly. With confidence. He's there, to, he's there to work on your behalf. He's there to, listen, he, this is all for you, and he goes to heaven, it's still all for you. Isn't that wonderful? That now that you should pay attention to is him in heaven is working for you now. <laughs> now, you didn't get it, but that's good stuff right there. That is really good stuff. He is working in heaven well, we're on earth on our behalf. That's the first now. Verse 25, 
says, nor was it that he should offer that he should offer himself often. That's under shadow Christology. If he'd have come, he, he'd have had to done that. But see, he came under shadow Christology to bring it to completion, to bring it to fulfillment. Not to work in it. Not to work in it, to complete it, to wrap it up, to bring it to an end. Uh, nor was it that he should offer himself often as a high priest enters the holy place year by year with blood not his own. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, now, now he's on earth and he's going to accomplish his mission. But now, see, pay, pay attention. But now once at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to take away sin by the sacrifice of himself. One, one sacrifice for all sin for all time. That's the consummation of the ages. That's pretty powerful stuff. And, and if, if you go back and you pay attention to all these little key words in there, they're dynamite. See the word now and now? Two different spheres of influence of Jesus Christ. Right? That kind of stuff. You know how you learn that? Listen to me. Now, it's important. You know how you learn to read your Bible that way? The Holy Spirit will do it. He wrote it. He'll teach it to you. I, nobody taught this. Taught, I, never, I didn't learn this in seminary. I learned this by studying it, understanding the Holy Spirit interprets and then he go, and when you pay attention when you read and pay attention him and go like did you know just did you know just what you read and I'm going mm, not well enough to get give a test and he said well the test is coming so let's read it and get it right otherwise I just passed over the word now see it is the word of God not just the Bible. It is the word of God. Well, anyhow. So, I, I find this stuff to be interesting. Uh, and when I read passages, that's what I do. And you could do the same thing I do. I, this is not brain surgery. I'm not the smartest guy in the whole wide world. I just love the word of God. I don't want to miss anything because God's speaking to me. I don't want to miss anything. So, when I study it, I study it under the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I don't read it as a book like the Birmingham News. Verse 24 and 25, now to appear in the presence for us all. Verse 26, see the word manifest. Look down at verse 27, 28, where we're going next time. Appear. Those are all, those are, next time I'm going to talk about these words. They're all different. They're all talking about now to appear. He has been manifested, will appear. I mean, if you pay attention, they're going to give you a whole lesson in itself. These are all appearances at all different times of importance in biblical history. That's big time stuff, buddy. I just laid some big time stuff on you. Three different Greek words for appearing with uh, off this consummation of the ages. That's dynamite. I'll explain it next week to you. Today I'm looking at 24, 25, 26. Point number two. The consummation of the ages is a messianic term. It's a messianic term. The consummation of the ages is a messianic term. If you're not interested in Christ, then you're not going to be interested in that. And if you're not interested in either one of these, you won't be interested in studying the Bible. But since all of you are, that makes me happy. The consummation of the ages is, is a messianic term used for the suffering of Christ for the sins of the world. At a specific time, now pay attention, 
at a specific time in human history set by God. That's that deal right there. You know when he put that, you know, you know when God decreed that, decreed it. You know when he decreed it? Way back here. Before the foundation of the earth at the eternal life conference. That's pretty powerful stuff. Pretty powerful stuff. The consummation of the ages is a, is a messianic term used for the suffering of Christ for the sins of the world at a specific time in human history set by God. Verse 26, otherwise he would needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world, but now once. At the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested. See that word manifested? Did I, did, I, uh, did I tell you that was a perfect middle indicative? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I should have. That's a per, that word uh, appear, I mean manifest, which means to appear. He has been manifested to put away. That word manifested is a perfect middle indicative, third person singular. Perfect tense means completed action. See, it goes with the idea of uh, once. See the word now once? See that? Now once. Rick, help him. He can't get out, Rick. Oh, he got it. <laughs> See? See? But now once at the consummation of the ages, see, this, this is a big deal. At the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested, the perfect tense, com completed action, to put away sin. That, that looks like a verb, but it's not. It's accusative. To put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. The middle voice, this is a middle voice, which means it's, it to 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 the, your advantage, it's to your advantage. He has been manifested to to and listen, it's beneficial to him. This middle voice, of course, feeds out to us in the middle voice. We're benefited. It benefits him because that's his mission. He's able to fulfill something to create an eternal life conference. He's able he's able to fulfill it when he goes to the cross, not when he's born. Not when he does miracles, not when he's the great teacher, not when he feeds 10,000, 5,000 or whatever, 5, 000, feeds the 5,000, I don't know. So right here, that middle voice, the, the, he, and he doesn't do it for us. He, do, he doesn't do it for himself. He does it for us. And he's benefited by that in the bigger scheme of the plan of God. The bigger scheme here in the middle voice is the plan of God, fulfilling, listen, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're here to fulfill the mission that God has set before us. Do you have any idea what that is? I mean, I should be the only one in this room that knows that. You need to think about this stuff. You really need to think about this. I mean, I think some of you think you're just a frog in a pond or something, that there's no real purpose in your life. That's not true. You're a, you're, you're a chip off the old block. You should be. You chip off the old block being Jesus Christ. I mean, you have a mission because you're attached to a mission, right? The whole, the whole life of Christ in this world was about a mission, and we're attached to that mission. We're the church of Jesus Christ. We are on a mission. We're all missionaries in the true sense of the word. <clears throat> and it's not just me. I mean, you're, you've got a gifted ministry. You've got spiritual growth maturity. God has put you strategically, each one of you, in the most unique places that other people could not get in the door to. Do you not know that? You're with people every day. You'd say, let's... Why don't you come and go to church with me? They're like, church? What are you talking about? 
Why do you think God's put you next to that person? All right? Well, Daniel prophecy deals with this. Daniel, now we dealt with this back when we did Daniel. Uh, Daniel 9.26, listen to this. Listen to this now. This is Daniel's prophecy to Israel. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off. Now, here's what I'd like to have you do. Circle that word, be cut off. And I'm going to show you what it means. Sender point number two, see in bold print the suffering of Christ for the sins of the world. Circle that suffering for Christ and then draw a line from there to there because that's what that means. See that? The suffering of Christ, circle that, and then the Messiah, Christ, will be cut off. That's what he's talking about. That's what Daniel's talking about. And that's what the consummation of the ages is all about, isn't it? See, the writer, the writer of Hebrews has put all this together in a wonderful historical package of theology. After the 62 weeks, the, and, I, and I've covered this, and if you want to know more, go back and pick it up out of our archives. It would cut off and having and, and, have, and have, have nothing. And the people of the prince, which is Satan, the Antichrist, who is to come, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And its end will come with a flood, even to the end that there will be war and desolations are determined. He's talking about tribulation, of course. But you see, look, you know what the key to this whole thing? Now we're, we're when, this, when this happens, there, there is a sign that we're in the last days. As soon as the Messiah is cut off, we're in the, I mean, now we know we're in the last days as soon as he was born to fulfill prophecy. Once he enters the world, we know we're in the last days. But for Israel, when he dies on the cross, buried and raised from the dead, that's the deal. Why didn't he say it? I mean, he told them over and over again. And they quoted it back at the crucifixion, did they not? Watch this guy because he said in three days he's going to be raised from the dead, right? Oh, yeah. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. It's a big deal prophetically. It's a big deal. And so the writer and the connection there, when Christ is cut off, when he suffers, suffers for the sins of the world, that, that was the big sign to Israel. As Jonah was three days and three nights business. Sign, 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 sign. So much for the signs to Israel, right? They still won't hear it after 2,000 years. But there was one guy that did, and that's a guy that, old Jewish boy that preached to me the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He died on a cross for my sins and was buried and raised from the dead. A little Jewish guy. He's smart enough to be saved. He wasn't no dummy, was he? Nope. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. They ought to be. All of them ought to be. Right? All of them ought to be, shouldn't they? Yeah, they all ought to be saved. There are, off, there are other terms there are other terms used like the consummation of the ages to this same period of time. He's coming in. He's going to the cross. Let me show you some of these that you're familiar with. Let me show you some of them. For example, in Luke 2, 25 through 35, a big discussion, looking for the consolation of Israel. Remember Simeon? That's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. And, and you remember Anna? in the temple, looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. That's what they're talking about. Zechariah, the, the priest father, you remember, of John the Baptist, in his Messianic hymn, Benedictus, you remember that? In Luke 1, I gave you all the passages. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about that right there. Those who had eyes, they saw. S Simeon saw it. Anna saw it. Zechariah saw it. Elizabeth saw it, and so it goes on. There was a pivot of believers looking for that, looking, looking, prophetically looking. Like we are to the second coming. 
Here's the third idea I'd like to share with you. The Greek word for consummation. Now, you know the English word consummate, right? It means to complete or end. Well, so does the Greek word. Except the Greek word is interesting. It's made up of two. It's got the preposition soon and to tell you. Telia means to enter in, in, to accomplish or end or complete. We're at the end of something. And the word soon means together. Therefore, therefore, this word means to end, to fulfill, to finish, to bring together to an end. Let me show you what it means. Uh, I think I put it on your paper. Let me just go on. The same Greek word. Is used in Romans eight chap is used in Hebrews eight eight, but you would never guess it. The same word, the same word for consummation. I just want you to go over. Well, I wrote it. No, I did. Well, yeah, yeah, I did. See the days are coming. See the word when I will effect. See that's our word. It's in the verbal form. That's our word. It's a future active indicative. It means to complete or consummate a new covenant with the house of Israel. See, that's, that comes from, that's a quote out of Jeremiah. If you remember, Hebrews 8, 8 is quoting Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, which is the great messianic passage on the new covenant. When he comes in the consummation of the ages, when he, when he comes and completes his mission, we are now in a new covenant. The old covenant has been fulfilled and we're in a new covenant all the way to the end. You understand that? The consummation. Listen to me now. Don't miss this. Consummation of the consummation of the ages. That was the key. We're out of the old and into the new. Now the writer said that. He said when this happens, then the old covenant is is soon to disappear completely. A and he said, I'll tell you when you'll know it. Here's a sign when the when the temple is dismantled. You'll know for sure it is over. Did it get to, did it get dismantled? Sure did. 70 AD by Rome. Listen, it got dismantled when Christ died on the cross, tell you the truth. <laughs> Didn't it? The veil dropped in the Yeah. The priest all knew that. That was Vines and his his uh Expository Dictionary of Biblical Words, which uh, every family ought to have in your library, by the way. You can go on Google and probably get it for a dollar. I don't know. It's on your paper. Uh, Vine says about the consummation, and it's a real simple. It's not heavy. It's not a heavy book. It's really simple. I mean, but it's really good to have. It gives you Greek words and definitions and some of the general ideas about it. It's a very... It's a very good little book. It's not that expensive. Um, Vine says about this idea of consummation of the ages. It was the heading up of all the various epochs appointed by divine counsel that Christ was manifested, i.e. his incarnation, to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now, he just told you a, 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 what they all knew. Because what you've got here in ages are different ages. So you've got the Gentile age, the Jewish age, then the consummation, then you've got the church age, the church age, and then you'll have the millennial age right there wrapped up. Wrapped up right there. This is, listen to me now, this is the consummation of ages. This is what they all prophesied looking for. This is what we deal, we look back to that. They look towards that, we look back to that. That's the whole key to us. For us, that's the foundation of our Christian faith. Right? Under the old covenant, two dispensations, they look to that. After that came, two dispensations look back to that. It's all about that right there. That's why, listen to me now, 
That's why it's called the consummation of the ages. Gentile age, Jewish age, looking towards that to come. It comes, then we look back to what, we do that in the Eucharist, don't we? And then we look forward. We celebrate the Eucharist and look forward. Maybe the Eucharist says Christ died on the cross, right? Then we look forward to his coming. That's the only difference. You see, both sides of this whole deal, both sides of the whole deal, everything is on the consummation of the ages. That's the idea of ages of this. This is so good. I mean, this is so good. And everything else you study in, in biblical history, this is, like the, this is like the format of everything you will study. I mean, once you get that picture in your head, everything else just floats. That is right there. Right there. I mean, he laid that out so sweet. That's really good. We'd have missed that had we gone like, well, I don't know what the consummation said. Who cares? Just read on. I mean, that's a big deal. Is that not a big deal? Hey, uh, Jane, can you hear me all right? Jane, can you hear me? No, bless her heart. I think I holler, but she said last week when she left, she said, I heard a little bit. <laughs> no, it's all right. If next week, maybe I can remember bring her closer. No, I don't. Well, I, there's no there's no place to mic it in down here, right? No, I know. Not tonight. I'm done. I, I'm about to wrap this thing up. We're, but I happened to think about that. Then when I spoke and she didn't know I was talking to her, I knew I was in trouble. Uh, you know, when Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, I am the first and the last, I am the beginning and the end, so this is what he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. It, let, me, let me do point four and we'll wrap this up tonight. The term, the, and this is a common term also that's used in connection with it. Uh, God uses this consummated day. He calls it the fullness of time. The fullness of time. In other words, here's time. Here's where time rolls on. Here's time rolling on. And right there's a fulfillment of it. He comes into the world to, to complete his mission. That's it. The fullness of time. Like in Galatians 4 and 4 and 5. But when. See, that's, that's the divine decree of time. And do you know, listen. What's today? I know it's Tuesday, but I meant date. I meant date. Was eight on my paper? I could. I wrote it down. You know, here's what you miss. Every day has been decreed for your life. Did you know that? You know how you know that? You know it from one way you know it is Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, one and two. He says, God has appointed your life from birth to death. Appointed means decreed. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2. Third chapter, verse 1 and 2. Every day of your life has been decreed by God and, and should be exciting. He puts a lot of stuff on your plate in one day. And listen, you know what? Listen to me now. It's all good. And if it's not good, you've got to change your attitude because Romans 8, 28 says it's all good. Now, when you say it's bad, is you've got a false expectation of what God decrees for you. <clears throat> and some days, doesn't mean it can't be tough. Just means they're good. Doesn't mean they're not going to be tough. We have those days, don't we? Take deep breaths. Ah, uh, people say, 
Ryan, you must live in a bubble. Yeah, it's called Jesus. I live in the Jesus bubble. If that's a bubble, I, I got it. Do you know how, 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 how much more fun life is when you know that? Bring it on. What do I care? This day's been decreed for me to handle. I can handle it. He would never give me more than I can handle. Just bring it on. If you've ever been an athlete, you know what I just said. You still got to play four quarters. And it may be a tough four quarters. But at some point, you just look across the guy and say, listen, I'm here for four quarters, so bring it on. You beat me, you're going to have to beat me four quarters. You can't beat me one and win. You're going to have to stay in the fight for me, with me for four quarters. Then football becomes fun. It also means you have to train harder. Because <coughs> sometimes the guy across from you can give you all, all you want for four quarters, and you still got to like the game. So that's kind of the way I approach my life. Christ does more for that than anything. I never got anything out of football. I get a whole lot out of Christ. But I did understand how the game was played. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born under the law, in order that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons. Talking to the Galatians. Gentiles. Talking to Gentiles. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Gentile, even Gentile Yankees. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 5, 6 tells it similar to fullness of time. He says, for while we were still helpless at the right time, <laughs> at the right time, it's always the right time in God, isn't it? If you walk in God, you, you never have to worry about, well, this is the wrong time. I must be at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. <laughs> How is that possible? How is that possible? Just put on a different hat and say, I must be at the right place with the right people at the right time. Right? Change your hat. <laughs> Listen to what he says. What, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. God demonstrated his own love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Much more than having been, now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Let me give you a great study out of Romans 5. I put it on your paper. If you want a great study, go into that passage of Romans 5 and start right from the start of the chapter, go through the, the it, I think that thing only goes 21 verses. Read it and pay attention to the word much more. Write it down and then tell you what he just told you theologically. You'll find one of the most interesting studies called much more. Who doesn't like much more of something you like? Right? When you really like it, in fact, we get married thinking we're going to get much more for the rest of our life. Right? Right? I mean, nobody gets married and says, well, I've, there's not enough here. I mean, every gets mar everybody marries for much more. But I'll tell you, God pays off. But God pays off. And there's a great study here. And I just brought out one, much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath of God through them. Is that not a wonderful? And much more, I wrote down a few of them, 10, 15, 17, and 20. That study is rich. Go in there and hunt that out. Also, I gave you a home study on this thing of ages. Here the plural is, but there the singulars are, right? Right. And uh, gave you a chance to go in and do a little home study. Try to get you to, into the Bible to read a little bit. See the dynamics of what's in there. Go 
tease you to try to read the Bible and see things that you normally would overlook that have great worth, like much more? I mean, who does not? I mean, I mean that would take you from one store to another if you can get much more of a deal, right? You'll pass up one store, go to another. We used to do it out there at uh, Galleria with a, a, what do you call those little things? Uh, not a puppet, but a, what's your boy? Robot. We had a robot, a robot. We ran that thing all over the store and we could get, we could stop people and turn them completely around and make them go someplace else. For something, something free, you could give them a pencil, they would do it. They would, they would go, and they'd go all the way to the other end of the wall to get something. It was the darndest thing I ever saw in my life. We were experimenting with that. Long before anybody else played with them, John Dyer and I were playing with them, trying to figure out a way to, I don't know, but anyhow, we were... That little puppet, that little, I keep saying puppet, but that little robot was, and it was nothing. We died, that, it, 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 I mean, it was, it was rough, and we still could get people to do it. Well, anyhow, um, so maybe, my point is, maybe you go in there and you fall in love with the Word of God. Look for stuff like that. Look for stuff. Look for common stuff that's in there, and then pay attention to see if, if, if there's a, yeah, that's better than Cracker Jacks. You remember Cracker Jacks? Well, I'd buy those things just to figure out what I'd get and whatever. Oh, that prize, that was something, wasn't it? Especially if it was a little ring you could wear and glow in the dark or something. My eyes, oh, gosh. It'd take up half the box, but who cared? Right? Back then, you could get it for a nickel. That was a day's work. Well, let's have prayer. Father, we're thankful for these that have come our way today by study, both by the automobile and the Internet. I pray, Father, for those who are with us by the Internet, that they would stay with us. Come on in and stay with us on a specific study. Don't jump around. Sit down and grow up. That's the way you'll grow up. Sit down and study. Grow up. I, I mean that. I, I'm being kind when I say that. I want you to grow up in Christ. And uh, I want to encourage you, pick out a night, like Tuesday night, and stay with us for a year. Uh, then if you have the courage, pick us up on another night, Wednesday night or Sunday morning. You can live stream with us or you can go to our, our catalog and study. But I encourage you to do that. We thank you tonight for these that have had the courage to come in and sit with us for an hour. We thank you for it, Jesus. We thank you for it. In your name we pray. Amen. The Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not counting our sins against us. He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us.
The Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not counting our sins against us. He made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us.